The Wolverine's fierce and batshit crazy attitude has intrigued us humans for centuries. But how exactly is it that such a seemingly small creature, especially compared to its unholy competition, has managed to become such a menacing force of nature? Now, the origin story of the Wolverine actually starts a few million years back with its prehistoric cousin, the Megalictus Ferox, which was one absolute unit of a creature. It's basically just a Wolverine on some Captain America type juice. But before we go down that rabbit hole, let's focus on the modern version for a bit. The Wolverine can be found in four different parts of the world. North America, Northern Europe, Northern Asia, and large portions of Northern Russia, including Siberia. All these habitats have one thing in common, they are extremely hostile, and not only in terms of their incredibly inhospitable climate, but they are also full of wicked, life-canceling machines like wolves, bears, and even Siberian tigers. So the fact that the Wolverine is not only surviving, but thriving in these parts of the world is absolutely incredible, to say the least. A lot of their insane drive and ability to survive in such harsh places has a lot to do with their genetics. They are often considered the largest and strongest member of the Mustelid family, which is quite literally the Hamma family of the animal kingdom. This says a lot when you start to think about all the other monsters that are part of that family, like the giant river otter, known to square up to skull-crushing jaguars on a daily, and the American badger known to steal the lunch money from goddamn bears. And of course, the ball-biting honey badger, known to start fisticuffs and win with pretty much any creature on the African savannah. But even with such a high aura score, the modern wolverine is a mere toddler compared to its prehistoric cousin, the Megalictus Ferox. And you have to excuse me for the low quality images coming up, but unfortunately I was unable to source or license any videos or images from the Miocene Epoch 5 million years ago, so these pictures are the best I can do until they develop some sort of time travelling device. Anyways, not only was the Megalictus over 100 kilograms or 225 pounds, but its head was also abnormally large compared to its body, suggesting that it had one immaculate bite force, able to crush bones. Its shape and size were actually closer to that of a jaguar, although it was a bit more stocky, kind of like a small bear. If you have ever thought about what a bear-sized wolverine or a lion-sized honey badger would be like, this is pretty much the closest real example you will get. Now, even though this absolute monstrosity is considered the largest and most powerful mustelid to ever exist, it still went extinct. While its descendants, like the Wolverine, inherited many of its best traits, which is what has allowed them to become such versatile creatures today. While there are a few notable differences between the modern and prehistoric Wolverine, they were fairly similar to each other. Although the Megalictus was probably a bit more of a hunter rather than a soy boy scavenger. But the glaring size difference between the two might be the most interesting aspect of the Wolverine's evolutionary journey. You see, the Wolverine is roughly five times smaller than the Megalictus was, which begs the question, why did the Wolverine lineage downsize to such extremes? At first glance, downsizing might seem like an obvious glowdown or disadvantage for any animal, but most of the time, it's the only way to survive. There are three main reasons a downsizing update might be necessary. One, resource availability, which basically refers to any environmental change that might have been essential for the Megalictus to sustain its size. The larger prey that the Megalictus might have hunted could, for example, have become less common, leading to fewer overall nutrients, prompting them to become smaller. The second reason is competition. Back in the Miocene epoch, the Megalictus had to fight against absolute demons like saber-tooths, bear dogs, and even oversized chickens known as terror birds. So its larger size was necessary in order to be competitive in such a sweaty lobby. The last reason is climate change. Now, before you go all conspiracy theory on us and comment some anti-global warming stuff, I can assure you that this is one of those climate changes that has nothing to do with us humans, and it has also already happened. So please do take a seat and calm down a bit. Anyways, during the late Pleistocene epoch, the shifting climate towards colder conditions could have favoured smaller and more energy-efficient creatures, giving smaller individuals a higher chance of surviving. So even though the Megalictus was a lot bigger and stronger, it would most likely not survive in the same harsh conditions where resources are limited, like the Wolverine does today. So theoretically speaking, the modern Wolverine is literally the absolute peak of its evolutionary journey. But what exactly is it that makes the Wolverine so bloody battle-hardened? Well. 
First off, there is one specific trait that seems to be universal when it comes to all members of the Mustelid family, and that's their ungodly strong mindset. What I am trying to say here is that they are all cracked out of their goddamn minds. They are literally willing to do whatever it takes to survive. This fearless attitude is necessary when trying to compete with the likes of bears and entire packs of wolves. Time and time again, they have been witnessed fighting off these powerful, life-canceling machines like it's part of their everyday routine. There are even stories of them taking down flipping polar bears. Now, most of the polar bear stories are just anecdotal evidence, usually coming from native Inuits of Alaska, so it should indeed be taken with a grain of salt. But there is this one zoo incident, which is also extremely poorly documented, but it did at least have some witnesses. So apparently, one particular wolverine managed to sneak out of its enclosure, only to break into the polar bear's enclosure and end its life subscription by essentially biting it in the throat. Truly some diabolical shit right there, but as I mentioned, they do have quite a few brawls with other predators, and there's actually a good reason for it. You see, wolverines are mainly scavengers, and just like us, they like to eat things that are already unalived. And wolverines do not waste a single calorie. They have specialized molars that are angled backwards, allowing them to grind bones and even frickin' teeth, so they basically just stalk other predators around in order to swoop in and eat the scraps from their latest hunts. And sometimes they might get a little too close, leading to some of these hot situations, but they also have an incredibly acute sense of smell, being able to detect carrion covered in deep snow several miles away. Now, although all wolverines are scavengers at heart, they are far from useless when it comes to hunting prey themselves. Not only is their endurance absolutely insane, on average, they travel more than 30 kilometers or 20 miles every single day. This is largely possible thanks to their large, wide paws, which keep them from sinking into deep snow, saving them a lot of energy. This ability also allows them to track larger prey for extended periods, eventually tiring them out. In addition to their stamina, they are surprisingly agile and can easily take down larger prey like elk, usually by breaking some ankles before delivering their final blow to the throat. Wolverines also have a built-in frost defense. Their fur literally doesn't freeze, even in the coldest conditions, making them basically immune to the Arctic's worst variable. Aside from having unmatched aura when it comes to surviving harsh conditions, they also have some pretty unique cub delivery systems in place. Because of their extremely unpredictable living conditions and low spawn rate of around one to two cubs once a year, they can't afford to give birth at the wrong time. So they have something called delayed implantation, their embryos will basically only start to develop when the living conditions are just right. This increases their chances of survival by a lot. After birth, the cubs will typically stay with the mother for their first six months of life, where they will learn critical survival instincts before going off by themselves. The father, on the other hand, will instantly skedaddle and get some milk after they are born, and we all know how that goes. So with their unmatched resilience and menacing attitude, the wolverine isn't just surviving, it's absolutely dominating the Arctic. Now, today's video actually blew up my budget quite a bit, so please do absolutely smash that like button if you enjoyed it. And also, let me know in the comments what you think about the production quality, as I've spared no expenses this time around. But that's about it. See you in the next one.